When was the last time you thought long and hard about composition? Well, we're going to talk about it a lot today, and maybe in ways you've never thought of. This is going to be a fun one, folks, so let's go look at ways in which to compose our scenes. And I must say, you always look very well composed. Well, hello, 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 minders. Welcome to 2024 Yay! and the Mind of Watercolor. So great to be back with you in this new year talking to you. I hope everyone had a wonderful uh, holiday season, Christmas and New Year's. I know I did. It was great. I took a lot of time off. It was very relaxing, but I'm glad to be back at it. And I think I've got something really interesting for you today. Now, I was given some Christmas money. Here was one of the things that I bought. This is a book about street photographer Vivian Meyer. Now, I don't know if you know anything about Vivian Meyer. This is, video is not about Vivian Meyer. This video is about composition, as you saw in the title. If you don't know the story of Vivian Meyer, it is fascinating. You ought to go check into it. There was a video, I think it might have been Netflix. I'm not sure. I think the title was Finding Vivian Meyer. Vivian was a nanny. She had a whole collection of photographs that were not discovered till after her death. They were discovered in an auction. Again, I, I've got to keep myself from telling the whole story. It is just a really fascinating story. But it turns out she just had some amazing work and everybody was amazed that she never shared it with anybody. She had like hundreds of rolls of undeveloped films. She had hundreds, uh, I think even thousands of slides or negatives that had never been printed or shown to anybody. They were just basically all her private collection, and some of her work is just amazing. But what we're going to use her book to do today is to study composition. And I'm going to give you five new ways to study composition that you may not have thought of or you might not even know about. And essentially, these five are design principles. If you've been around my channel long, you've heard me say design is composition on steroids. I was a graphic designer for 35 years. Design is just something that's very close to my heart. And you get into some of these principles uh, very much because you're dealing with abstract. I mean, when you do an ad layout or even a logo, usually you're talking about an abstract design. But we're going to take some of those principles and inject them into art. And I hope you won't be uh, thrown off by the fact that we're going to be looking at photography because the principles I'm going to talk about today apply to all forms of painting, art, drawing, photography. I'm using uh, Vivian Meyer because I'm excited about this book. And as I was looking through, I just saw some of these principles vividly demonstrated in her work. Her work is just astounding. And I think this will be very refreshing and very much less confusing than trying to put them all together. We're going to go through them one at a time. And if you have a book like this, it doesn't have to be this book. Uh, it can be another artist that uh, you revere and you love their composition. I could do this with Andrew Wyeth. Uh, he is one of the strongest and most uh, unique compositional masters I've seen. I could, I could do the same thing there. But I, I suggest you take these principles one at a time and look at several pieces and find that one principle and study just that one thing in each of these pieces. This is like a spice cabinet of composition. In, in a spice cabinet, when you're cooking, you don't use all your spices. One is usually more predominant than the other, but they will give you some wonderful ideas. And you will start looking at really great artwork or photography, in this case, with new eyes. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to start seeing great composition with new eyes. And composition really is best learned just by looking at a lot of it and just sort of injecting that into your brain over and over and over again. This doesn't provide you with rules, you know, to lay out something. It just provides you with tools, not rules, just tools. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, let's get into it and let us look at the first one juxtaposition. So what is juxtaposition? Juxtaposition is the placement of various objects, usually close to each other, but they are different. 
comparing and contrasting. Uh, there's too many photos in this book to go through all of them. I'm actually going to start at the beginning and just pick out a few. So this is the process that I'm recommending you use as you study these five concepts. Juxtaposition. Okay, juxtaposition here would be comparing and contrasting. So there's some great ones here. I mean, some absolutely great ones. First of all, uh, Vivian is the main subject. She did a lot of self-portraiture. And you have her, her camera, and a mirror. And there's a lot of detail. Look at how this, in terms of size, even uh, her figure, her camera, and all of this, uh, is juxtaposed to the small clock. Also, the busyness of this space versus the calmness and emptiness out here. That's juxtaposition. Comparing and contrasting. Placing things in ways in which they contrast. And the more you look, the more you find. I mean, look at her reflection. And this is going to be a great example uh, for some of the other in the list of concepts that we're talking about, but we'll come back to it. These have a lot of visual weight, but she has minimized them by pulling them away from the other. So that sort of placement and juxtaposition is key. So let's look at another one. This is great. I love the way that she's captured these figures. Uh, notice, and <clears throat> there are several concepts that tie in, and when we get to the other ones, I'm going to mention that. But look how these two figures both have their hands to their mouth, and they're pointed this way. You can tell uh, by their positioning and their the legs and everything that they're actively going this way. This figure here is looking this way. She's the only one faced that way. That is a form of juxtaposition. Now you can do this, you don't have to do this with people. I mean, you can do this with still life. You can do this with trees and landscape, flowers, you know, in which way they're facing and, and how they're juxtaposed. Juxtaposition can involve color, bright colors versus uh, muted colors, dark colors versus light colors. Another juxtaposition I see his, here are these two very organic uh, human shapes in this frame of this sign here. That's a nice juxtaposition. And that will, and we'll see another principle involved there in a minute. Another uh, compare and contrast form of juxtaposition is this horizontal band we have from this railing and those shapes there compared to the upward standing characters. I love this. this uh, I've seen this photo actually a lot. I uh, just love the design here. And uh, several of those principles play out. We'll look at the one juxtaposition. I like the way he's turned this way. She's turned that way. You know, this could be buildings. Again, it could be flowers, trees, animals. I mean, any subject, you can do these forms of juxtaposition. Uh, her hands are seen. His are not. Their size relatively the same compared to people looking in at the camera. Here's another one. I love this one. I love this woman here looking that way. This is a form of juxtaposition, although I would call it a little bit more of a, of a shape or arrangement design. But she's large compared to these women. But look at the shape, the sort of pyramid shape the four of them make. But also look at the juxtaposition of this woman here subtly going the opposite way. Again, this can be done with shapes. Uh, I think of trees and the way branches point, you know, and how you design details, you know, invading space and subdividing space. It's all a form of design. You have a lot of humanity down here, meaning a lot of organic, fairly busy shapes. And then as you go up here, it's juxtaposed with these very strong architectural shapes. Very cool. Let's take concept number two and study it. Concept number two is connection. Connection is the way everything relates. In what way is it connected? Uh, there are some very obvious ones here. I mean, the, the biggest one to me is the way all these shapes here are connected with the camera tripod, her figure, being reflected in the mirror, the step down of the mirror reflections. And look at the way she, the mirrors, the camera, the packages all seem to connect to the clock. 
That's cool. You know how I can tell? Because we're connected. These are the kind of concepts that once you start looking for them, you'll see them everywhere. And you'll go, oh, you know, sometimes a great composition is just not immediately apparent as to why it is. And then the more you look at these principles, the more you see why. The connections here are excellent. I mean, they're all over. Uh, I see connections or near connections with light values going through her dress, his shirt, her dress, his shirt. The geographic lines, the linear connections in the background, just sort of pull your eye, pull it all together. I love it. Uh, again, I love how they're pointing that direction, walking that direction, looking that direction. She's not. She's looking forward, but he is. And then their arms are sort of a graphic flow to their arms. And, we'll, and there'll be yet another principle where that'll come into play. But it's connected. Values. It is so important in watercolor, uh, particularly, to connect similar values and simplify them. Um, you have a lot of value connection throughout the background here. Uh, that just helps this contrast against that. If you had like bright values just standing out everywhere, then you would not have that ba background uniformity and uh, congruity. Some excellent co connections here. I mean, the balloons are just wonderful. And of course, we have the connection of the strings that are holding the balloons up. But a nice graphic element. It's not too dark. It's not too bright. Doesn't overpower the scene, it's subtle. But your eye is brought out of these two couples, which is your center of interest, sort of her face is where I first rest. And then my vision is thrust up here and connected. And it just connects to her hands, which is really cool. But connection works hand in hand with the first one we talked about, juxtaposition, where we see the values. Uh, I see now, and I didn't talk about this, but the lighter value on her face and the lighter value of his shirt offers sort of a asymmetrical balance, a juxtaposition. And then you've got a connection of all of this space back here. A lot of great connections here. Uh, this little pyramid shape of these uh, four women, five women if you count her, uh, are nicely connected because they're pointing. I mean, it's a, it's a visual connection almost, but they're pointed looking towards her. But look at these steps back here. It connects uh, the whole part of that scene together. And then your your eye is brought up into this architecture with her head. This, this woman here is connected with this part of that architecture. These are thoughtful elements. Uh, sometimes someone like Vivian Meyer can capture these in a second. She can see them, comprehend them, she might actually take five or six photos, and this is the one that, that does all these things. I think it's just really neat. All right, so let's go back to the beginning <laughs> of these four photos, and let's look at principle number three, and that is flow, direction, and thrust. Uh, just three words to kind of mean the same thing. Flow, uh, might be the way, and this relates closely to connection, the way things are connected, but they pull your eye through a piece. Direction could be something very sharp and pointed or very strongly directional. Uh, and also the word thrust, you know, where that's like a real, mm, like real, powerful punch forcing your eye in the direction it usually has to do with the eye flow direction and thrust in comic books it's called an action line uh well even really in gestural drawing but in any composition you can have a directional element a uh, flow which i kind of think of as more subtle so let's look at this one we've got some nice ones here uh her Decreasing size of her figure and the reflections. Very noticeable one is the tripod. It's thrusting directionally right up into this. And we just have a nice design going here. Hopefully you can see how flow, direction, and thrust is also very closely related to connection. Because we talked about how this was all connected and how this space was connected. 
that is also a flow that can represent a flow so there's a nice flow we have a nice directional element here so compositionally everything flows even this negative space why it's subtle there's a nice flow here this is one of my favorite i see why they put it at the very front of the book because it's just such a great abstract composition flow direction and thrust well we talked about uh juxtaposition and you can see how it relates to thrust uh, these people directionally are thrusting your attention and the tension of the photo this way and this woman's gaze sort of breaks that up that was a nice juxtaposition but it is also a directional thrust so again these things are starting to work together and be related i think the the way these ge geometric shapes sort of tie in with the figures and then kind of lead you out here or the way these figures pull your eye right up into that sign you're nicely led through this with your eye it's a nice flow and we can even see these banisters going down into probably the subway so uh, that leads your eye up you just have a nice sense of direction even though these figures at first seem very static they're not just sitting there it's fantastic some nice directional flow here. Again, at first we're presented with a very static scene, but there's a lot of great directional uh, elements here. I like the way his attention uh, is off to the side and hers is this way. So you have, even though they're connected, very connected back to our last uh, concept, they're pulling your vision apart. And of course we've got, uh, there's sort of a, a flow, directional flow, the way he, his face is that way, this face is looking in. Even the highlight on his shirt has uh, a directional element to it. And of course, to me, the biggest one in this one is the thrust. The very strong directional thrust of these strings holding the balloon. There's also some directional flow with this. We talked about that in connection. That serves to connect the composition but it has some nice directional element to it as well. And this is what I would like you to do. I'd like you to, to find uh, some very strong compositional artists or photographers and go through one at a time and study them. And finally, our last photo. This hits everything uh, really well. We've got uh, some flow here. Talked about connection with that shape. Uh, these steps connect all of that, but it also is a directional element so two hitting on uh, two concepts basically hitting on the same element or the way her her head thrusts your eye up here it's connected but it also moves your eye up through there and even this uh front out of focus part looks like she took that picture out out of a bus or something or maybe out of a cab there is a visual thrust right across the bottom of the photo a directional element pulls your eye through there. And I like that because it really keeps this whole uh, composition here from being just very static and still. One thing I've noticed, I mean, it's just all through her book, is there is a lot of movement and flow, directional flow in a lot of her photos, even the most static. Nothing seems to just be standing still. <laughs> it's great, I mean, it's just great. All right, element principle number four is rhythm and repetition. This is a big one. I love this. Uh, there's one place here, well, no, maybe two, where you see it, and that is uh, the repeated legs that provides repetition but also a rhythm, and then the reflected steps of the mirror. Rhythm is such a neat compositional design element, I think. Believe me, just watch. And I have seen it just constantly throughout her work. This photo, again, is loaded with it. The railing, balusters, or whatever those are called, uh, all of this pattern back here. Repetition can be in the form of a pattern, which, again, the way these principles uh, relate, that is a form of connection, too. Uh, just look how this pattern of these panes here kind of connects this whole top part with the exception of this. 
but that's not just like a disjointed area. That's that is connected with these characters who are thrust your flow and your direction is thrust up into it. I mean, you've seen how all these things are connected, but just some great rhythm and repetition in here. A little more subtle on this one, but it's there. Some interesting patterning here in this uh, little exit sign, but the obvious balloons make for some repetition. We have a uh, sort of a duplicated thing here. These lines that are sort of scrawled, written into the cement there. That's, I would call that a rhythm. It's also a connection. It is also a directional flow. So these principles, again, I'm repeating myself, but just for the sake of getting this uh, into your head and so you can really enjoy this, they're all so related. Lots of repetition, lots of patterning and rhythm here. The steps probably have the boldest rhythm. Uh, e again, this, this pyramidal composition with these women has some nice rhythm to it. Uh, obvious back here with the three arches and then the columns. A lot of nice rhythm in the texture and the brick. But none of it's disjointed. It's all connected. Getting right back to our other principles. It's all connected and it all flows together. In architecture, you can find a lot of great uh, repetition or rhythm. But making it a cohesive whole like this is, is a real talent. You know, but again, you just look at, look at it a lot. Look at a lot of it. Look at it a lot and look at a lot of it. And study it. Break it down in these ways. All right, we're going to do the last one on our list, and that is negative space negative shapes. Now for this, I would define that as anything that is not the main subject or the standout subject. So it's usually empty space, receding space, background space, if you will. It can be a number of things. Uh, it's very obvious here. You got this huge area back here of negative space. That is not throwaway. There's an eye opener and no mistake. Anybody that does uh, really advanced compositions will treat negative space as though it were a solid element, something you had to include in your design. It's not just there, you know. It's not just you place these things and move it around. This is part of your design. This is part of your composition, this negative space. Here, a lot of this space out here, uh, I would call negative space. It's defined by value. This foreground, uh, I would call negative space. Even though it's foreground, it's dark, it's contrasting, it's calm. That plays into our first principle, juxtaposition, the busyness next to the, the calm, sort of uninterrupted space. But that's negative space. Even though you have pattern and complexity back here, pa uh, I would say that value has taken this into a more negative space. And all the little bits of negative space play into the design. So they're not throwaway, once again, around this figure. Negative space uh, can also work in conjunction with number two, and that's connection. They can connect your scene really nicely. All right, negative space plays a big part in this. Uh, all this subdivided wall space I would consider negative space but it very much works in a connective way and utilizing that principle as well. Uh, this bit of light area over here above these background figures is negative space. Again, there are shapes there that are part of your composition when you're talking about negative space. A lot of great negative space here, but it's not as obvious because in every case, there's something going on in some part of this photo I would still say that by virtue of the value, a lot of this background composition or architecture is negative space. But what about inside these arches and inside that doorway? And here's a little shard of negative space up here. Perhaps uh, these light plateaus on the stairs or these parts of the stairs where it uh, seems like it's more empty space in the shape. Calm at first seemingly uninteresting, but you need those to offset the busyness of things like this. 
All right, so there you go. There are five great ways to study composition here in 2024. If you want to tune up your composition IQ a little bit, um, I could pull out any book of any really good master artist and find a lot of those same elements, paintings, drawings, all of that. I hope you'll do the same. Uh, put a comment down below and tell me who uh, one of your favorite artists is in terms of composition, great compositions. Put out some suggestions for your fellow viewers here. Uh, who do you like? A, a, a huge favorite of mine, I think I already mentioned it, is Andrew Wyeth. His compositions are masterful. Let's hear your suggestions. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for your support, patrons. 2023 was a great year. You all made it possible. On to 2024 and looking forward to new things. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.